What's up, everybody? I'm sure that you've heard the news by now that Dana White announced last night that UFC 300 has been beefed up by adding Zhang Weili defending her strawweight title against Yan Xiaonan at UFC 300. And this is the first time in UFC history that two fighters from China will be squaring off against each other for a title fight. And at the end of the day, guys, I know a lot of people are going to be very negative about this matchup. They're going to talk down on UFC 300 because that is the thing to do right now. I am not necessarily going to jump on that train. I'm going to give us some hope and hopefully maybe bring a little bit of light to what maybe you're kind of struggling to see here with UFC 300. And what I mean by that is, guys, in my UFC 300 build a card, I, I my prediction was that we were going to see Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko 3. I thought that that kind of had, you know, the makings of the trilogy. That, that could be a huge fight for UFC 300. But at the end of the day, guys, they were going to put a woman's title fight on this card. Make no mistake about it. I've been adamant about that. I knew that that was something that they were going to do. And if they were going to not do... Shevchenko versus Grasso, this is a close second in that match matchup because for bold predictions of 2024, I stated there was a real possibly, possibility that Jan could be the new strawweight champion. And this is a fight that I believe has all the makings of being a very entertaining fight. Now, I understand why people are going to complain and you have a- absolutely every right to complain. Dana White's supposed to make an announcement the day before. He doesn't. He postpones it to the next day. We think that this is going to be like some world-breaking, internet-breaking news. Like we're getting some gigantic matchup. And we get this. And it's like we feel almost like blue-balled in a way, right? Like we feel like we, yes, it's a great fight, but it's it kind of got taken away from this being a great matchup because everyone thought that it was going to be some huge names, some crazy fight like a Poetan versus Adesanya type of deal, or the return of Brock Lesnar, or just something crazy. That's, I think, what we were all expecting. But Dana White instead wants to talk about power slap and then relay the news of UFC 300's amazing title fight added and then wants to throw Zhang Weili versus Yang Janel on there. And I blame Dana White for this. I think that the way that he pitched this The way they went about this was a total fumble by the UFC. And at the end of the day, the UFC's point of view is, well, what does anyone care? They're going to watch anyway, which are they wrong? We are going to watch anyway. So the point is, I know everyone's saying UFC 300 is going to be awful, but they're still putting pieces into place, right? I mean, we still have Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling, which is an interesting fight. We still have Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. We still have uh, Armand Sarukian versus Charles Oliveira. There is still time, and I believe that behind the scenes, the UFC may not have had a plan. I agree with, with with that. I've seen people out there saying that. Maybe they didn't have a plan. They're trying to scrape some things together. But I think that the UFC is working on some big matchups to, to ultimately take over you know, at the top of the card because this means one of two things with this matchup being booked. This is either going to be the third from last fight on the main card, because typically a main card, we see five fights, right? It, it, sometimes we get six. Is there a possibility we get six for UFC 300 with it, with it being historic? Sure, that's a possibility, but let's say it's only five. There's a real possibility here. The first one is Charles and Armand. The second one is something else, and this would be the third fight, and we would have two fights above this one, presumably maybe being title fights or maybe being two gigantic fights, because I believe for UFC 300, we've seen in the past the UFC do Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor headline the card and then put title fights below it. I'm not ruling that out for the UFC. I know everyone is, you know, they're ejecting from the plane right now. They are hitting the panic button. I'm not doing that. I understand that UFC 299 is stacked to the gills. Yes, we can all sit there and say UFC 299 is the real UFC 300. We can all say that. But there are still some matchups out there that I believe the UFC is trying to put together. I believe the UFC is waiting to see how UFC 297 plays out because that's going to have something to do with that. I believe that we there's possibilities that there's some certain fights as we go here in the video I'm going to discuss get made. But let's just talk a little bit about this matchup because this is the problem with this is the way that this was built up is it took away the steam from what this matchup is because if they were let's say they had to put a woman's fight a title fight on this card. This is top two for me. Number one, it was Shevchenko versus Grasso three for the trilogy. This fight's right behind it, guys. This this fight, from an X's and O's standpoint, if you're a hardcore fan, 
This is a great fight, man. I mean, the only thing that, that, that concerns me a little bit heading into this matchup, we've seen the, the, the dominance from Wei Lee, right? We've seen what she's been able to do outside of that head kick loss to Thug Rose where she got clipped with that lead leg kick. Outside of that, those two losses are what concern me, right? In her last four fights, she's 2-2, two and two, coming off a KO win over Jessica Andrade, which, by the way, that's super impressive, right? I mean, Jessica Andrade is one of the toughest customers in, in all of women's MMA. She hits hard. She's aggressive. That's one right there. Beating Mackenzie uh, Dern by decision, right? I mean, I, I, I see where people are going to say, well, yeah, but Dern's striking isn't very good. So, I, okay, whatever. I'll give you that one. Maybe Mackenzie Dern's a little overhyped. But then we look at Marina Rodriguez and Carla Esparza, and this is where I kind of have some question marks, right? I know with Rodriguez, it's a split decision, so it could have gone either way. But that Carla Esparza TKO loss, that doesn't age well. That doesn't age well considering what we saw the last time out for Carla Esparza. And I just don't know. I've, I've had a lot of question marks about Yan Jelnan. I know she's very talented. I know that she's one of the best female fighters in the UFC. I, I've said that. I said that on my bold predictions video that I'll link down in the description for 2024. But I believe that this is a great fight. I think that this is a fight that takes place on the feet. I do believe someone gets, gets finished. I believe that we see some sort of TKO, some sort of knockout. I do believe that we get that in this matchup because... There's no, there's no doubt about it that Zhang Wei Li is one of the best female fighters of all time. She is heading down that route, right? I mean, we saw what she's been able to do since she's been in the UFC. She, she is exceptional. She is an exceptional athlete. She has tremendous power. She's very well rounded. She's got great speed. She's good everywhere. I think Zhang Wei Li is a sensational fighter, and I don't want this to get overlooked because. Dana over, over, you know, by delaying the announcement for a day and kind of already pissing everybody off and then making this announcement. This is a great X's and O's matchup. I believe we get a finish. I believe that this is one of the more exciting women's fights in the entire UFC that they could make. Again, I say second behind Grosso versus Shevchenko for the trilogy. That would have made the most sense to me. But I think if we're looking at it this way, guys, you knew, you had to have known they were going to book a woman's fight on, on this main card. Like they were going to do it. It's a historic card. They're going to put that on there. We've seen women's title fights on huge cards before where we get the Diaz and McGregor cards. Like we see Misha Tate fight on there. Like this is, I don't know why everyone's so shocked that like, oh my God, they put this card on there or this fight on there. This is a big fight. It's a great fight. It's a great clash. I know it's not like, oh my God, it's going to put everyone, everyone's you know, butt in a seat. But when you're watching this, th I think that this video will age well after UFC 300 when this fight goes down as just an absolute slugfest. I believe someone gets finished. I believe that bonuses are handed out for this matchup. I'm not saying it's going to be the best fight on the card. I sure as hell hope it isn't. Guys, make no mistake. I'm not sitting here saying... This is the greatest fight the UFC could have put on for UFC 300, and they're doing an outstanding job. No, they built this up wrong. They built this up wrong. They should have announced the gigantic headliner, which maybe they're still in the works trying to figure some things out for, or they're scrambling, or they're trying to get deals signed before they announce anything because it is a big historic event in UFC 300. Maybe that's a possibility, but let's not let Dana's BS overlook what a great stylistic matchup this is. This is a fantastic fight. And I know a lot of the casuals out there and, and, and a lot of people are going to say, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a casual. I'm just saying maybe you're not as familiar with Yan Zhanan. You're not as familiar with watching Zhang Weili fight. This is a great fight. This is a great fight. You know, I, I just think that at the end of the day, guys, UFC 300, we got to give it some time. They're, they, they're focusing on UFC 299. And what another people think, another thing that people are tending to forget UFC 299 was already stacked, and I've made a video talking about that. That is to assist Sean O'Malley and help sell those pay-per-views and make him look good. But also with Francis Ngannou, Anthony Joshua going down the same night, which that was recently announced about a week ago, the UFC has extra motive to focusing on UFC 299. So don't let that take away from what I think UFC 300 is going to be. I don't think that it's going to be necessarily better than UFC 299, but don't you guys think it's weird that we have Conor McGregor saying he's going to be fighting in at International Fight Week, but yet we haven't heard anything from Dana or the UFC on it? Isn't that a little bit weird to you? The biggest name in combat sports, Conor McGregor, 
he says that he's fighting, but there's no official announcement. There's no word from Dana White. There's no announcement by the company. So I'm not saying Connor's going to be on UFC 300, but I believe that they are they are stacking. They're getting their ducks in a the line. They're not going to pull this stuff where they announce Paulo Costa fights where he hasn't signed anything and they play this game of where the fight falls out and doesn't happen. I believe behind the scenes, they're trying to get their ducks in a row. They're trying to get these things signed, sealed, and delivered before they announce everything big. But I am with you guys. I absolutely understand the frustration. We're, we're up, we're waiting to hear from Dana. He delays it for a day. We think that this is going to be some crazy fight and it ends up being this. My point of this video, we can't let that take away from the, 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 the point that this is a great fight. This is a great stylistic fight. If you're, if you're a diehard fan, man, we, we got to appreciate the X's and O's of, of the way that this fight matches up. And I know that some of those losses have been a little suspect on, on the side of Jan moving forward. But everywhere, every time you're in the UFC, man, and you're fighting the best of the best, things happen. That Carlos Sparza loss is the one that really concerns me. But I do believe this is a great matchup. And I think that Zhang Wei Li is probably able to get the job done. But I believe this is a slugfest on the feet. I believe that this is a fight that has the fans on their feet. Huge, huge fight. And I, I, I agree. I've seen people out there saying, maybe this is a fight that should have took place in China. This should have headlined a pay-per-view over there. This should have been a, a, a fight night headliner there. I get all of that. But at the end of the day, it's what we got and it's what the UFC's rolling with. So I'm trying to be positive. But a comment below, like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, help your boy out and drop your opinions below on this matchup and what you all think of UFC 300 thus far. But I appreciate you all. See you in the next one.